Warning, don't try this at home. Nitrotolines are toxic and probably carcinogenic. Acids are corrosive. The funny red gas is very toxic. And if you don't control the reaction properly, it can go kaboom. Which, um, this person found out the hard way. <laughs> so yeah, don't try this at home. This is for educational purposes only, as they say. Oh, and for the record, I'm totally qualified to do chemistry. Welcome back, and today we'll be doing the mononitration of toluene to make ortho and paranitrotoluene. Why those? Because metanitrotoluene is useless. Anyways, you might have noticed, but this is not in the fume hood, because at the time of recording, the fume hood was broken, so I was using my old fume extractor in front of the window, which it worked fine, but I liked the fume hood more. This is pretty much just Magpie's procedure, but I changed a few things around it. So what you need is 40.2 milliliters of sulfuric acid, and 50.4 milliliters of nitric acid, 75%. You can adjust the um, amount a bit if you're using 68. So mix them together. Of course, it's better to add the sulfuric into the nitric, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter if you do it the other way around like I did. It just gets a bit hot. But we'll put it in the ice bath anyway, so it doesn't matter. So just mix them together thoroughly, and you can see the nitric acid fumes angrily. Which, yeah, that's nitration acid for sure. So we're going to set up an ice bath. And we want to cool it below 10 Celsius. And in the meantime, I measure out 57.5 milliliters of toluene. Put that in a two neck flask into the fridge to cool it down as well. And as you can see, I set up the um, flask in an ice bath with a thermometer in one neck. And on top, a dropping funnel with the sulfuric acid nitric acid mixture. And I slowly add it over the course of well, a few, like 30 minutes. And to maintain a temperature below 30 Celsius. Post-production here, almost forgot to mention, you must have very fast magnetic stirring, otherwise the layers don't make sense, it does nothing. Yes. And I will slowly change colors, you can see right here, but that's fine. And you can see here I accidentally added a bit too much and the temperature spike, but it didn't go over 30, so we're fine. Actually, it didn't even go over 10, so yeah. I swapped it out for a crushed ice bath, because better heat conduction. And yeah, you can see it's gone red. And next we're gonna heat it up to 50 Celsius for two hours with very strong stirring. So I set up my hot plate for external thermocouple, set up a water bath at 50 Celsius, and I was worried about the color, but as you can see in the fire hoaxes video, it's red as well, so we're fine. It's not gonna blow up on us. And yeah, my hot plate was heating for whatever reason, and uh, yeah, it turned out I didn't turn on the hot plate. Well, the thing on the back of it. So, <laughs> I fixed that. But yeah, I'll just let this nitrate. I was only one hour in, but I ran out of time, so I decided I'll continue on with this tomorrow. So I put the nitrotoluene um, crude mixture into the fridge and let it sit overnight, and then the next day I'm going to let it nitrate for one more hour for a total of two hours. Now, if you have enough time, you can do this all in one sitting, but it's been enough time. And uh, I let it cool down. I actually put in the ice bath, and it's like at like 11 Celsius right now. So it's sort of colder than I want, but oh well, it's fine. So we're gonna add this into a separatory funnel, which I have here. I'm gonna pour this carefully because it's acid and nitrotoluene. Probably should be wearing my gloves for this. You know, what? I'll I'll get my gloves. I'm just gonna drain the acid out. So yeah. And we're gonna wash it with a little ice cold water, just using the ice bath. If I'm lazy like that. Put this thing back in. Hmm. Seems like the top layer is clear and the bottom layer is cloudy. I have no idea which one's which. However, it might be the bottom one. It looks it looks like it. I'm just gonna quickly Google the density of nitrotoluene right now. Okay, it should be heavier than water at a density of 1.1 or so, 1.16 or so. So this should be our nitrotoluene, and I'm gonna carefully drain it off. Oh, almost forgot to stop it again, which. It's not a big problem, but it's, it's gonna make me look stupid on camera. Tighten that a bit, this feel, feels a bit loose. And now we're gonna drain the water off as well. So, we're gonna make sure this is closed. And we're gonna pour the nitrotoluene back in. 
now we're gonna do a bicarb wash, which... No, that's sodium chloride. Where's my bicarb solution? And if this is acid, it will explode violently. If it is not acid, it's fine. It will, it'll just fizz a bit. And it is indeed not acid. So, yeah, I did something right. And you can see it's taking up the red color from it. So it's removing some impurities from it. Which, that's good. And hopefully we should be left with a yellow pale yellow liquid at the end of this yeah, and shaking it I'm just gonna do that swirl it that swirl it that shake it that okay it seems safe oh, and lab hack if you um, use nitrile gloves uh, keep um, a thing of talcum powder or baby powder in yours because if your hand is the slightest bit wet it's impossible to put them on and they don't powder the gloves anymore, so yeah. So just powder it yourself. So I'm gonna pull the fume motor. Oh. Sure, that works. So I'm just gonna invent nothing. Hopefully it doesn't explode on me. By that I mean detonate, because it's nitrotoluene. Mono nitrotoluene, but it might have dye and try, so yeah. And it might have formed an emulsion. Here's my emulsion breaker 3000. It's a vibrating motor strapped to a iron ring. <laughs> so the idea is, oh, it's also loosely clamped. So the idea is, this jostles it, and it is it separating? I think it's slightly separating, but it's very slow. So the idea of how this works is. It vibrates it, which, because it vibrates, it breaks the surface tension or something, and ta-da, it works. Uh, I stole this idea from Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia. Ester is transferred into a SEP funnel, and an emulsion is broken with a vibrating gilding apparatus. So we're finding just the right spot. Creating mixtures. I'm going to crank it up a bit. I have no clue how well this is working, but it's spinning my sub funnel, which... Oh, yeah, that's a good cool thing, I guess. <laughs> spinning separatory funnel. Only on Edward Science Innovation. Well, it appears the nitro gloves do not protect you from nitrotoluene. <laughs> so butyl gloves it is, then. You know what, I'll just do this tomorrow. It's not completely separated yet, so yeah. The next day it separated nicely, so I drained the lower nitrotoluene layer off. And you can see there's a bit of weird precipitate, but it shouldn't affect anything. So yeah, the lower layer is nitrotoluene. Drain it off. And if you get a bit of the bicarb solution in, it's fine, because we'll be drying and distilling anyways. Well, or we'll wash it again anyways. So yeah, it's fine if you get a bit of bicarb solution there. And drain the bicarb solution, wash into a separate container. Because we will be extracting it. So put your nitrotoluene back in the subfunnel with a bit of water, wash it, and yeah, drain the nitrotoluene off again, and then drain the water wash back into the um, other container. So the reason we're saving the water wash is because I want to try extracting it with heptane or some other solvent to see if I can get any more nitrotoluene out. You probably don't have to do this, but I want to see what happens if you do. So I took the water extracts, I added heptane, you can use hexane, I extracted it, and um, the heptane did turn a bit yellow, so that means we did extract some nitrotoluene out, although I don't know how much, so probably it's not worth doing it, doing this, so yeah. But whatever. So I then take the aqueous phase and drain it off, and we take the heptane phase and we add it into our nitrotoluene flask as well. And to the nitrotoluene flask, we're gonna dry it with a bit of calcium chloride. I was out of magnesium sulfate, so yeah, calcium chloride it is. I let it dry for a few hours, and then um, I set it for distillation. So I put it into a larger flask because otherwise it'd foam over. And originally I was gonna do a vacuum fractional distillation, but the issue with that was that, um, well, I was using Teflon, um, uh, Teflon seals instead of vacuum grease, which 
It leaked air in, and once all the heptane boiled off, it refused to distill further, so yeah, I just set it up for um, vacuum short path distillation, so it would work perfectly fine. And I do not distill this dryness, leave a tiny bit of residue in the flask, because distilling the dryness is very dangerous. The dye and trend tolerance will be concentrated, and while yes, there's little to no none, uh, there still is a chance that it can go badly, S which is why I left some residue, and the residue will um, contaminate your final product anyways. So next step is the freezer nitrotoluene, so I put it in the freezer. Unfortunately, mine isn't a proper freezer, but rather a mini fridge, so it couldn't get cold enough, it only froze a tiny bit out. So I put it into a salt ice bath, which ended up not working either, but it melted it in a brine which freezes at negative 20 celsius so it cooled the flask down to negative 20 celsius and we froze out the paranitrotoluene perfect if you have a proper freezer this should not be an issue so next filter it and then um take some petroleum ether i distilled mine from gasoline boils 31 to 45 celsius and wash it with a very small amount of it it does not appear to be soluble in petroleum ether however i won't try using large amounts of it because it probably is slightly soluble, so use it sparingly. So I just washed it once, and I let it um, dry under a vacuum for a while, and in the meantime I took the filter and put it back in the fridge to freeze. This, and I transferred the now dry paranitrotoluene into a suitable container, I used a vial because there wasn't much. And, well that's paranitrotoluene, well a small bit of it. Anyways I froze it again, as you can see I have more crystals, so I filtered it once again and well vacuum filtration and now the first time i actually cooled the fruit down but you don't have to do that to be honest it worked this time fine at room temperature and now wash the flask out for some petroleum ether which should pull the orthonitrobin um toluene out but leave the pair behind and let it dry in our vacuum this dries the paranitrotoluene but also evaporates the petroleum ether from the orthonitrotoluene filtrate and ta-da we have two well, the two isomers of nitrotoluene. And subscribe if you want to see what I'm going to do with them. And see you in the next video.